Hello everybody and welcome to my HAL Laboratory special. HAL Laboratory is known for games like Kirby and Lolo, but today we're going to look at some of their other games, their older games, games for the Commodore 64. It's not well known, but HAL Laboratory made ports and clones of popular arcade games before they came into their own with their own creations. I believe they started on the good old Vic-20, and uh, if you look at this page here, you'll see that Iwata, who is now president of Nintendo, was involved in some of the programming. Uh, he might have even programmed the games that you're about to see, which uh, that would be kind of neat, right? As you can see here, he hid his name in a game called Star Battle, so you know who wrote it. But let's look at the Commodore 64 output of HAL Laboratory. These included Le Mans, which is a Monaco GP clone, uh, 79 Monaco GP, Pinball Spectacular, which is a clone of a game called DB, and Jupiter Lander, which is basically Lunar Lander. Uh, let's see how these games play. Let's start with Pinball Spectacular. It's not really pinball, and it's not really spectacular, but what it is, is a mix of pinball and breakout that's fairly clever, or it would be clever if Namco hadn't completely done it first in a game called Bombi. But anyway, this is a pretty competent clone of the original Bombi game, um, and the best part of it is you can play with paddles. Uh, so, you know, those are the, uh, you know, for people who are younger, those are the controllers like on a Pong machine where you, it's like a dial that you twist left and right to move your paddle, and you can kind of whip it around uh, with a high degree of accuracy. Uh, this game has a lot of uh, scoring that's like pinball. It has a multiplier, and you run that up by completing rows of the breakout game or completing the, the letters that say Commodore and, you know, other things like that. Uh, you complete the letters that say Commodore by hitting the bumpers that say, you know, C-O-M-D on the side. Uh, and, you know, there are various other uh, ways to score, too, like hitting the Commodore logo or those, uh, those bumpers. Um, the game can be, in my opinion, a little bit cheap. I, I really hate the drains. I I've seen balls just kind of bounce off the whole field and then uh, go right down the drain with, with very little user interaction. I, I don't believe in this game that there's a way to uh, tilt the table, so you can't really do much about that, unlike uh, other pinball games. Yep, just like you saw there. Uh, there are ways to get a barrier, though, by completing certain uh, sequences of events. And here's my favorite of the bunch, Le Mans. Mostly because I'm a huge fan of the 1979 Sega game, Monaco GP. It's what I call a dodge the blobs racing game. Uh, and I say that because uh, the cars really could just be anything that you're dodging. They could be boulders or asteroids or whatever. It would still basically be the same game. Um, and that's kind of the way, you know, old games are so abstract. Which, which is one thing I do like about them. Um, you'll notice if you've played uh, the old Monaco GP game that this has a lot of the elements. It has the tunnels, which you just saw there, where you can only see things that are lit up by your own headlights, which is a pretty neat effect. It has uh, the bridges where the road will just narrow, um, but it is missing a few things. The, um, the graphics are very plain. Uh, and they kind of have this weird tile draw in where you can, it's almost like it's putting down these, these graphics in the background as fast as it can go. You know, I, I almost would not be surprised if the, this game was made in basic or something. Um, it's missing the scenery, it doesn't have uh, the same extend system either, which is actually really problematic. Um, the way the original Monaco GP worked was that you'd score a certain number of points, and that would give you an extended game. And from that point on, uh, instead of getting extended time, you would get extra lives. And that worked out very well for that game. Um, in this one, every 20,000 points is an extend. So for that round, that 60 second uh, interval, you'll get an extend once the timer clicks down to zero. And so if you actually hit the extends at the wrong time, you know, you, you can actually make the next round easier or harder depending on. Uh, when you roll over that landmark, uh, you know, that uh, 20k boundary. 
It's in contrast to how the original Monaco GP did it, where in that one you get your extend and then it goes to a uh, live system for the next round. So the original didn't really have that issue. Uh, you know, other games like Enduro do it by, uh, you know, every time interval you have so many cars to pass. And then once you pass so many cars, you stop, you know, the, the past cars stop counting. So every round is fresh. Uh, in this game, you know, you might start with uh, 10k points until the next 20,000, or, you know, 19k points until the next 20,000, and that's a vast difference. I would say that this is the second best way to play Monaco GP at home. The very best way is to get a Saturn and import uh, Sega, Sega Ages Memorial Volume 2, which has a really nice, um, nearly arcade perfect uh, version of Monaco GP on it. Um, and, you know, there's a SG-1000 version of Monaco GP, but it's more like bump and jump or something. They added like a jump button, it's really goofy, it's not very good. Um, so this one kind of beats that out, uh, unfortunately. Uh, you know, SG-1000 was Sega's first console, before the Master System. And one thing that makes this version really great is that you use a paddle, uh, like in Pinball Spectacular. So you're just whipping that car around uh, past these other drivers, um, you know, doing these really tight maneuvers so easily. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, it's worth noting a lot of the hacks you'll find online have joystick control, which isn't nearly as good. And I don't believe there's ever a official Le Mans release that used joystick. I think those are all kind of hacks. I want to also get a word in about the original Sega Monaco GP game. Uh, one really notable thing about it is that there's no CPU, so you can't just run it on MAME. Um, I think someone might have made a simulator for it. Um, but that's a really interesting tidbit. Uh, it's a 1979 game, and it has, um, you know, digitized sound and uh, full scrolling backgrounds and pretty detailed cars. I mean, graphically it really puts this to shame. Um, so that was kind of a feat for a game back then, and pretty state-of-the-art for 1979. Uh, a lot of CPU-driven games didn't really catch up to that till years later. So, uh, you know, if you can go check that one out, if you ever see an arcade cab, by all means, try it out. It's uh, really worth playing, in my opinion. It's also worth noting the similarities between the original Monaco GP and Spy Hunter. Uh, Spy Hunter, you know, they both have uh, a similar setup. They both have a countdown timer where you can crash as many cars as you want, and then when it's expired, you go to a live system. Um, and they both have the thing where when you start off the side of the road, um, you can floor it and not run into anything until you go into the road, and then you're vulnerable. Uh, anyway, uh, that pretty much wraps up my game of Le Mans. And uh, now we're on to the next one, Jupiter Lander. Oh god, what can you say about Jupiter Lander? Such a basic game. Um, Jupiter Lander is a version of Lunar Lander, which is quite a bit better. Um, in this one you have one screen that never scrolls, and you try to land on these different landing pads, and you do that by slowing down until you, uh, you know, hit it without uh, blowing up your ship. You know, if you hit it too hard, you explode like that and you get either double points five times the points or ten times the points depending on which pad you tr you are aiming for so if you're really ambitious you go to the ten times one and you get a fuel refill um, between each landing uh, I think proportionate to how well you did so if you're really good at this you can continually play and if you're not so good your fuel will just kind of count down until it's game over and the name of the game is Conserving Fuel, because every time you fire thrusters, you use a little bit of your supply. Um, not really the most exciting game out there, and doesn't really make very good use of the Commodore hardware, like, you know, everything else by HAL. Um, you know, they never really used uh, smooth scrolling, they never really used sound very well. Uh, in this game, your Jupiter Lander, the sprite kind of blinks a little bit, which I don't know what would cause that. Um, you know, Le Mans had tearing. Um, and, you know, HAL went on to do some not very good arcade ports for the NES, like I believe they did the that uh, Millipede port and some others, 
And, you know, later they really got their act together and made, made some really great stuff like Lolo and um, Kirby. Um, and as much as I like Lamont, I have to admit that, yeah, the execution is not great. Um, Hal gets the Most Improved Company Award. <laughs> anyway, that pretty much wraps it up. Thanks for watching, and good night. Thank <laughs> you.